Hello, this is Bo from Bo Not Broken, and we got Ty here. I'm down in, uh, I'm actually down in a cool area of Salt Lake City, the 7th and 7th area, um, with Ty today. Took a little trip on tracks and thought I'd hoof it a little bit. Um, this is Bo Not Broken, the Daily Bend, and uh, bringing to you regular folks with, uh, with regular hopes, ideas, you know, adversities and people trying to help people and that's what we're doing here. I, uh, I'm grateful for those that are watching, that are liking the shows that are going on. Remember if you have any input, questions, comments, you'd like to be on the show, just give me a message, text me, call me, whatever it might be, and um, we'll uh, figure out when to have you on and all that stuff. Ty, thanks for, thanks for having me this way. No worries. And, Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, we, we talk about faith and courage and endurance, and it's uh, really kind of uh, sometimes life can be hard. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and, and we're going to talk about what you do a little bit later on, but maybe tell us a few little antidotes, stories, things that you might have worked through in your, in your life today and might be able to help somebody. Cool. Yeah, so, um, I mean, growing up, I kind of felt like the weird one. And so I had, I had a lot of internal stuff, negative dialogue stuff that was going on for me. Right. And when I was at work, um, people would come to me all the time and they'd say, uh, you know, I got this thing going on in my life. How, how do I fix it? How do I work with it? And I'd always get in trouble because I'd be spending more time with my coworkers than doing my job. Right. Um, so. As I, as I worked through some of my own traumas and, and stuff that I was dealing with, my mom passed when I was 15 from leukemia. Um, I died a couple of times. Um, really? Yeah. Sickness or just like... Uh... Yeah, sickness. Like when I, was, when I was a baby, I was real sick. Wow. Um, so I ended up passing away a couple of times there. And then there were complications after that. And then because of my spiritual adventures, um, I've actually experienced... Um, kind of a facilitated death process and things like that. So it's it's been about a dozen times now that I've passed. Wow, this is going to be a good show. <laughs> <laughs> so t take uh, not to stop that no, no thought, worries, but, yeah. but back a little bit. So while you were going through all your things, you were helping other people. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Inevitably, yeah. as I as I'd sort something out, mm -hmm. somebody would come into my space and I'm like, hey, how do I, you know, male female communication, or how do I. Um, cancel out some of the negative thoughts going on or right. how you know I I don't like the people would come to me and they're like I'm not normally depressed but I'm having these thoughts of suicide right right and I was like well yeah I've had those too but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's going on right so I, I work through that kind of stuff with people um, and dealing with loss and illness has, has been a big one um, can you give us a maybe a real specific one in that arena that you know really affected you and how you kind of worked through that yeah. with faith and courage and endurance. Yeah. So my mom um, was was very she was small town Christian and so I was raised that way and then she ended up um, she was pretty sick um, the last few years that she was around and um, she ended up having uh, uh, acute myelotic leukemia. Wow. Oh. Um, so it came on pretty quick. She, you know, she had these little illnesses and whatever else, and so she ended up passing when I was 15. That was it's, you know, pretty transformational age for anybody. And so when when she passed, one of the things that um, it actually ended up, you know, traumatizing my family was that I I said several times that you know when they do the viewing, I was like, that's not her. And people thought that I was like in denial or whatever else, but I'm just like, no, I know my mom's spirit and she's not there. So a lot of people have come to me and they're like, okay, I, a loved one just passed. And how do I, how do I connect with them? How do I, um, you know, do the, the healing that the physical and the, you know, the earthly body gets to have. Um, and a lot of that stuff, I mean, <laughs> thank goodness for the internet, because I was able to, I was able to ask the questions that I didn't know how to ask and not have to direct them towards my family um, so that they could do their own healing process and I could get my own exploration. Right. So then as I, as I find these different things that work, people come in and they say, you know, for instance, um, 
you know, I, I feel like the the spirit of my um, husband or my mother is still here. It's like, well, yeah, they're here, and, and I can actually see and experience them, um, which is a fun little side effect of near-death experiences or, or passing over or that kind of thing, is that different um, different sensations, different skill sets, they stay with you, um, and that's anybody. I've done a couple of. Uh, like so you can't song. take your toys with you, but you can take your skill <laughs> yeah, Pretty much, pretty you much. Your silly, oh, well, that, yeah. that goes along with a lot of things. But yeah. yeah, yeah. So interesting. Yeah, with the the near death experience, I've done a, a couple of talks on the near death experiences because people, you know, they're really interested in that. Faith is is powerful, um, and then there's a whole other level to knowing. Right. You know, because it's like, well, I I trust and it feels right and. You know, I know it, whether you're religious or spiritual or whatever else, but I know that I've got this this yeah, energy. Yeah, talk about that. This is this is Bo not broken the daily bed, and we're talking with Ty about some of his experiences and and things that have gone on in his life. Talk a little bit about that faith, because when I talk about it, I don't necessarily talk about religious or whatever. It's more faith in yourself and those processes that you're going through or experiences that you're going through that. You know, might give you more more faith in yourself that you know you didn't really have. It's something that you've experienced. You know, wow, I can. I think I can do that. Yeah. Charge forward. So right. if you'd speak a little bit more on that faith. Yeah. So when when I was growing up, there was a lens, and it was very religious. This is what faith looks like, and this is how you apply it in your life. And these certain things happen this certain way for this certain reason. Right. Um. As I as I grew older, though, um, and I mean even early teens and before then, the the answers that I was receiving they weren't complete. It didn't cover everything, right. and I and I experienced a, a more in depth interactive world than just uh, hey you know I I have shoes on my feet and I'm walking that kind of right, thing. Right. There was so much more to it. It was much more rich environment. So. Faith for me, after you know, after childhood, basically, it didn't just look like um, a feeling, and didn't just look like practices, but it looked like the entire foundation of my reality, um, the the reason that things were going on, and that it was a dynamic interaction. Foundation of your reality. That's yeah. an interesting way. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah, because there, for me, and and this. Just as, as I see you, I see this additional world that supports this interaction. Right. Um, so it's as real to me because I've seen it my whole life. Right. Um, because I had the the uh, near death and the, the passing over experiences very early in life. So I didn't have a lot of this context that a lot of folks who pass a little bit later or you know have got near death experiences. They've got all this context for. This is reality, and then touch and hear and smell and taste and all right. those things. But for me, it was okay. This is one level, and then there's another, and another, and another. And as I got into that, um, there there were more diverse answers that I needed. So I started to look for them. And again, the internet came in real handy because right. you can access a bunch of these different faiths, a bunch of these different not only religions but spiritual um, avenues meditations, um, other people sharing their experiences. You know, YouTube wasn't around then, but you could get a lot of written right. information. And so this this global resource really connected me to what all these people were doing in their lives. I don't think there's anybody out there or, you know, that we have, I mean, that we've been a part of their life that really in one way, and religious, uh, diverse religions, don't believe that that you can have, they all believe, I should say, that you can have a near death or a, a, a death experience and come back. I yeah. mean, even the LDS religion yeah. to the Catholic, I mean, you go or to, you know, the, the you know, some of the, the more Asian relig you know, religious type things. Um, talk to us about that real quick, because that's, it, it seems that the, as that part connects a lot of people together is that, that that near death experience. And yeah. you when did you have your first your first it was it was before I was two. 
Okay, it was Warrior Two, one. and then your next one was the the next one. I had three of them pretty close together. Okay, and then the other one came. I had a seizure when I was about I was about three or four. Right. Um, and really, at, at that time, I was I was already experiencing a pretty integrated reality. And then that seizure. That's the one that I talk to most people about because they can really they can grasp onto that and right. it has elements that they're used to seeing in near death experiences. Uh -huh. Whereas my other ones, they uh, they've been a lot more personal and a lot more an exploration of what's beyond the the physical reality, um, rather than in association to the physical reality. What do you say to those that you know? Well, not to keep on this topic, mm -hmm. but what do you say to those people that that say, "Oh, that's a bunch of you know whatever," and they maybe they haven't done their their <laughs> kind of their their research or whatever, and they say, oh, it's a bunch of, you know, what? What what bonds, I mean, what kind of bonds everyone together in these these near-death experiences? The individuality of it, I would think, or more of the conformity of it? Is there more, you know, if you, you talk to people all the time about it. Yeah, so well, that, that death and life itself, you know, as a natural relation, are, are things that are really interesting to people because as far as most people know, um, you know, depending on whatever religion or spiritual path, as far as most people know, we come into this earth, we have a physical experience, and then we're, we pass. And what happens before and what happens after, if there is anything, mm -hmm. is you know the foundation of a lot of the different faith paths and whatever else. Um, one of the things that I've realized, though, is that there is there's throughout anybody's life there are these cycles of life just as the you know we're experiencing a utah spring mind you not not yes the spring is snow other and people yeah. snow yeah. and sun and rain right. and yeah. everything else all four seasons we even have leaves from the right. fall that are flying around <laughs> yeah so you know we're we're experiencing spring and we're experiencing these cycles of rebirth and growth and i i see that everybody has those experiences in life and so the the process of passing to the other side. A lot of times it is precipitated by trauma. People will have a car crash or they'll have these other things. Uh, one of my really good friends, Jeff Olson, had did a really traumatic car crash, lost some family members, but turned it around and is now an inspirational speaker right. and has got several books out, that kind of thing. Wow. Um, so this this process... I think I've seen Jeff yeah. on Facebook and all around. Yeah. yeah, Jeff's quite, yeah, he's got the great, he's got great stuff. Yeah, and, and he's just, he's got, he's so authentic, he's right. got a huge heart, I, I just love him. Um, so, people, people are taking those, and that's what, that's what I really feel people want to experience is the hero's journey, you know, Joseph Campbell, that whole thing. Right. But they want it so that they can actually reach out and touch it. They want somebody that is literally down to earth and they can interact with that they can say all right so it doesn't have to be something huge right. it doesn't have to be you know dying 12 times or any of this right. other stuff right if i can go from this thought or this this part of my life where like for me i, I felt so ostracized i felt like nobody knew what was going on for me i didn't know how to communicate these different things like i felt completely alone even if i was surrounded by people not to change your thought pattern, but because we can get to the rest of it. Yeah. At what age did you go, I'm different and I'm not really fitting in and I'm, you know, more of that adverse time of, gosh, I could go this way, I could go that way, or maybe I did go that way for a while and come back. Yeah. What was that for you? Because I think that's important for not only maybe young people that might watch, yeah. but parents, yeah. you know, kind of that. Oh my gosh! I, I see this. Is that a dangerous, <laughs> or I don't? Right. You know, maybe f I'm learning from you, yeah. and that's why we're here. We're learning from people or helping people. Yeah. So for me, that happened pretty early on in life. Now I had a lot of diverse experiences early on, so it may not be the same learning curve for everybody else. Right. But for me, that happened literally when I was about five or six. Wow. So Young. yeah, I had this okay, what I'm experiencing is not what other people are experiencing. And when I talk about it, right. um, it kind of freaks people out. Right. So 
well, maybe I just won't talk about it. And you're maybe, just a different child, right? 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 And that's and and as and as I've dialogued with my family about this more recently, they're like, no, we have those experiences too. We have this kind of stuff going on. Um, but it was, you know, it was, how do I say it? I don't want to, and it's all this, it, as a kid, um, and adults still do it, but as a kid, you have all these, all these absolutes that you're convinced of that really don't have any logical basis. They're all emotionally based. Right. And so, you know, no matter how many times a parent asks, are you okay? What's going on? Tell me about your day, that kind of thing. The kid, and me as a kid, wasn't in a space to actually talk about it, actually get into it, and my process was was way different because I'd have to I'd have to start into a dialogue in order to actually even know what I was going to say because my mind didn't think about here's here's my argument and here's the supporting you know, this uh, you know as a kid it's just like um, I want to talk about something really cool and you know maybe the parents aren't in the space to receive that at the mm -hmm. time. So this is, and I only recently, through my friend Aleph, um, discovered the five love languages. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, yeah, right? And then yeah. I actually got to share those with a group of kids. And so these kids are now starting to think. What in, a novel idea. Right? To teach or to interact with kids with yeah. love languages. Oh, it was we wait till empowering. We're, we wait until we're 50 or whatever it is. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. And so all these tools are available, and the kids, oh my goodness, the kids these days are just, they're so tuned in. They get, right. you know, they know truth when they hear it, and they're like, cool, I'm going to apply that in my life. I'm going to do these things. Um, I connected, oh, what's that kid's name? I forget his name, but he's like this 14-year-old entrepreneur. He's got like seven businesses now. Wow. And it's like, yeah, that, like that level of, okay, I get it, why not start now mm -hmm. and have the support? He's got his own agent and everything. It's awesome. Um, but, you know, connected to him through Facebook. But these love languages, given the kids an awareness that the way that their parents communicate, the way that they communicate can be different, mm -hmm. and there's certain things that they can do to ask for support. I'm, Alif is amazing at this because she'll actually, um, like, she doesn't just say, okay, you're, you know, you're a gifts, you're a, a words of affirmation, the rest of this. She actually dialogues openly with her kids about this. And she's like, okay, um, you know, do you need more personal time? Do you need more physical touch? Do you need more gifts? Do you need more of these kind of things? And the kids know that it's okay to approach that. Mm -hmm. And it makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. And... I don't even know when it started, and I, maybe it's just like a, an overall human history kind of thing, but we we have this belief that we're smarter than the people that came before us, <laughs> and the people that came before us have a belief that they're smarter than we are. Right. Right? Right. So, like, I've had some of the, some of the most profound spiritual theological dialogues with preteens that... And, and it isn't about who's right and who's wrong and where they read it or the rest of this. It's just like, what do you think and feel? What's going on for you? What experiences are you having? Mm -hmm. And when they know that they can open up and talk about it, boom. It's almost it's like awesome. they haven't been corrupted. Right. Totally. You know, to a certain extent with, it, yeah. with mainstream society. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. At what point, I mean, what do you consider yourself? Are you a, are you all of the above teacher, <laughs> mentor, healer, yeah. you know, coach, I, yeah. whatever? And and when did you, when did you figure out you were that? But and how long did it take you to get to this point? All right. Excellent. So in uh, December 2012, um, on December 19th, 2012. The, the job that I'd been doing for about a decade, which was civil engineering inspector. Oh, right? there you go. Ta-da. So I was a doing Joe that, job. Right? Pardon the Joes out there, but a Joe job. A <laughs> yeah. bow job, I guess. Yeah, right? Yeah. A bow job. A sure. Job. And, I mean, you, of all people, know as, as you work these different things, they ignite these other aspects of yourself, and you begin to go into this. So I'd, I'd already talked about how my coworkers are coming to me. They have these 
different issues and whatever. Right, right. So uh, December 19th, they, they gather us all up and they're like, guys, we're sorry. Um, you know, we got to lay you off. Because, oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Because we, yeah. we, we had all these bids out, you know, several hundreds of millions of dollars Oops. worth of bids out. Didn't come through. Um, we, we'd love to keep you all on, but we don't have the money to do it. Um, you know, stay in touch, this kind of thing. Right. Now, the other guys in the room are like, oh, crap. Like, some of them knew it was coming. They had the dialogue yeah. there. But yeah. they're like, oh, no, my whole livelihood, the, you know, everything that I planned on, and now i got to look for work again. I literally, as soon as he was done announcing, like I was twitching in my seat. <laughs> as soon as he was done announcing, I ran in there and made sure I was the first one in. And he's like... <laughs> Hey, how's it going? And I was like, good. Let's do this thing. Wow. First time in, in all my career that I ever right. had a severance package. I was like, wow. whoa, right on. I was also making like um, almost one and a half to two times what I'd made in that uh, profession at that job because it was Davis Bacon. The right. government money gets Are you an uh, engineer by, by college or no. just by trade? By no, experience? just like being in the field. Right. So, okay. Um, so I, I studied up a bunch. I got a bunch of certifications. Right. I was well right. leveraged there. You do it without college. Right. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, I, I roll in there and I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Mm -hmm. So then I had, it was, it was basically like three grand, which to me was like, yeah, right, right. on, let's do this right. thing. So I, I roll in, I, you know, I cashed in my vacation pay, I cashed in all this other stuff. And then me and, and four of my buddies are like, okay, cool. Now that you're freed up, we're going to go to a school program. And so we did. In like six months, we, we, from concept to actually getting into the schools, we did three different schools, got on with this big What kind of program? It's, um, so it's a non-denominational program. Um, Basically, like solution-oriented oh. uh, training, problem-solving through yeah, know, and, yeah, yeah. So, like one of, the, and I'm gonna, I had, to, I put it in the wash. I was gonna wear it today, but it's <laughs> E times A equals C. Um, so energy <laughs> yeah. times action equals creation. Oh. So just real simple, and then we get into you know like all the science behind how you actually when you're in a when you're in a troubled space you actually increase the amount of light that you produce in the bioluminescence. And then you're you're combating these different things. So you're literally being the light in the darkness, right. kind of thing. Um, and we get into this. So the kids just loved it. They were just going nuts over it. And the parents and the teachers are like, "Whoa, wait! Communication and empowerment." And like we even, because you know we we rolled in with some wristbands so the kids could have swag that kind right, of thing. Right. And the the kids didn't all bring money. So we're like, "Well, if you bring us." something in exchange will give me one, right? Right. They cleaned up the whole auditorium looking for something that they could trade for a restaurant. Wow. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like manipulative or anything. Right. These kids were jazzed about what they got. Wow. And they it was the it was the assembly on a short day before a long weekend and they stayed like an extra hour afterwards. So wow. you had autographs and photos and So you guys were really on to something. Yeah, right? yeah, and they really hit on that. We're, you're watching on Periscope. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah, the United States, for all our people that, or for a few people that are watching around, you know, the world. This is Bode Not Broken. We come to you uh, Monday through Friday. This is the Daily Bend show where we have people that, uh, people helping people. Uh, I call it sometimes Adversity 101, <laughs> but uh, we also call it all about the bend and how we, uh, I believe, and a lot of people believe, we use... A lot of different things, but but the basic or the core of Bow Not Broken is faith, courage, and endurance um, through life, through some of our experiences and things like that. And ties with us talking about uh, what he does and some of the experiences that he's been through. So take me back to when you were, you know, this age. You were very early age of enlightenment and <laughs> and knew what you were, knew yeah. you were special, knew yeah. that you had a gift to do certain things. So is there any label to put on you at that point? Or is it more just somebody helping say everybody, you know, just yeah. this person that, that is a resource? Well, and that's that's a good thing you bring up because a lot of times people, they want a label they can identify with. Yeah. And they want to know, yeah. okay, you know, What are you doing nowadays? Kind of yeah, what are you doing right, right. Now, That's I get that all the time. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, um... <laughs> 
I'm helping people, yeah. you know, what I've done my whole life, but right. just in a different way. Yeah. yeah. And that's, so that's, you know, and sometimes when people ask that, they just want an easy answer, which is why. You're a so motivational easy, speaker, right? and that's the easiest, you right. know. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than, well, I alchemized my entire life existence into every moment so that I can inspire people to create the change in their lives that they wanted to for years. Right. You know, that, wait, what? You didn't? Yeah, know? yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> pass the, <laughs> pass the pe peace pipe. Right, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. and a lot of people, family included, you know, they, they go into the realm of, you must be crazy, or are right. you on drugs, or... Yeah, you got the beard, right? you got the ponytail, <laughs> you you must be something. Clearly, yeah. 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 And, and the, the beauty of that is that, that that's just a, a coping mechanism for a lot of people. And for me, I use titles like World Peace Coordinator, I use titles like Shaman, I use mm -hmm. titles like... Um, entrepreneurial coach or body linguist. I, mm -hmm. I got like four different titles on my card mm -hmm. and people can identify with that. And as right. you know, there's a whole marketing and the rest of that goes with sure. it. Sure. But the the biggest concept and actually my first book and then I'm in the middle of writing my second one um, is it's about being human and the B part of being human is capitalized. So B therefore perfect is actually where it, it pulls from. When Jesus of Nazareth said that, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's so work on being perfect. You're well, not perfect. You you are perfect, right? And continue to be perfect. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's where a lot of people and it and, you know and I love some of the mistranslations on the Bible and some of the other mm -hmm. uh, spiritual and religious texts because they they just I mean when you when you get it and you're like oh wait this root word actually means this it changes the whole context of mm -hmm. it and thousands of years of conflict and everything else just kind of evaporates and like, oh, wait, now what? Right, <laughs> right. But, um, so, be, comma, therefore perfect, which is saying that you don't have to do anything other than be. Right. And you are perfection. Right. And a lot of people are like, well, I'm not perfect, or I'm not going to try to be perfect, or they've got this rebellion thing against perfection because they have a belief on what perfection is. Mm-hmm. My own experience very early on, and the experiences that I facilitate with people now, is you are perfection. You have all these other things in the way that you're trying to quantify and outsource and compare yourself to all these different things, but you are perfect mm -hmm. in just the beingness. And when people tune into, and some people call it Zen or... or uh, there's a bunch of fancy names for Finding it. Finding yourself could be yeah. one as well. Yeah. yeah. So this this enlightenment or this um, this belief in uh, in the moment, in the in the stillness of the now, when people find that, amazing, beautiful miracles really happen in, in that space. Um, I've had several people come in with chronic diseases, which was you know my main motivation because. When my mom passed, there wasn't any solution for it. There mm -hmm. wasn't there wasn't a cure. I mean, leukemia is just it's crap. Like it's horrible. Right. Um, but what's even worse is the chemotherapy, um, and that's not a solution. That's just like let's fight it with something. Let's almost kill them. Yeah. yeah. And get rid of. Whatever. Yeah. And like yeah. just and then it doesn't it does not work in the in the grand context. So I was looking for other solutions. So when people come to me now, they've got these chronic diseases, or they hit this plateau, or they, you know, depression, anxiety. I went through a whole lot of that growing up. Mm -hmm. um, largely self-inflicted, largely this other stuff, which I unraveled later on. But I have these tools to combat that. We've I've talked about it quite a bit, and we've talked about it on this show every once in a while. Everybody looks at everybody's highlight reel. <laughs> they look yeah. at their the thrills and the spill, the highlight reel, and they forget. Even young people. I mean, and that's what we try and you know we try and affect young people too. But parents, I mean, people my age and older, they're still looking at everybody's highlight reel. Yeah. And when you look at someone's it's highlight reel, like they're going to be style. perfect. Yeah, everything's <laughs> perfect on Facebook. You know, that's why I used to post all the time. You know, living down by the river. That's yeah. I mean, that's what I do. You know, but everybody gets mad because. Well, gosh, you can't look. You can't be like down in the river, but but be this motivational guy. Well, yeah, you can. I think you can. Yeah. You know, there's certain things I'm doing that that I am that way. But 
back to you. I think what's we are we are what do you we're with Ty and we are here at what do you call this Seven compound? Seventh and Seventh Street Studio. The Seventh and Seventh Street Studio. Yep. In Salt Lake City, Utah, the United States. And you let's go there. You do a lot of things. You and others do a lot of things here. What do you guys do here? Okay, so the main main push right now is Divorce Cafe. So we want to give divorced folks resources, community, connections, that kind of thing. You don't give them boxing gloves, you give them <laughs> tools to... We got boxing gloves, oh, but okay. it is, you know, All right. we don't always get both people involved, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so so um, Divorce Cafe, that's yep. kind of cool. Yeah, so uh, Aleph and I and Asia um, have a, uh, a, there's a radio um, spot, podcast, and then there's also the first Wednesday of the month we meet up. Um, so the next one's on the 6th. Wildly popular, this Divorce yeah. Cafe. Yeah. Um, people, like, we open it up at around 9, and it doesn't close till about 7. And we got people in the whole time. The whole and, time. and they'll come in together or individually yeah. and talk through, talk about. Yeah. So we got practitioners that show up. Um, you know, we got attorneys, you got brokers, you got real estate agents, you got. Um, counselors and hypnotherapists and all these different things and of course I'm there with the, the shamanic flow mm -hmm. um, in case somebody is just like I, I gotta clear my energy out or you know I want a card reading or something. Boy like don't that. we all need a little shamanic flow. <laughs> I mean that's awesome. That sounds right? good. Yeah. That sounds like you're a superhero. You need shamanic <laughs> flow on your on your t-shirt on Friday. So there you go. I'll just I'll yeah. set shaman. up with it. Shaman. Yeah. Um, but that's that's people want that experience and that's the beautiful thing about Divorce Cafe and some of the other things that we do within the community is that we give people the opportunity on you know like real low investment time energy money um, they come in and they're like okay I just want to try something different I want to be part of a community where not every, this is the <laughs> big things that we don't just bash on the the other parties right we want to give the the people resources so it's not just uh, you know a, a complaining fest right people go in and they're like okay I want solutions and I right. don't know where to look or who to talk to and you literally we've got nearly 20 practitioners now I don't know that the lights just oh I know we just got right. brighter sun yeah. it's, <laughs> well it's just like going to if you if anyone's ever been divorced out there in the world you typically have to go to a class mm -hmm. and they talk about don't bash the other, you know, don't bash the other. Don't talk in front of the kids about, you know, your own junk and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So here's an opportunity to be positive, yeah. to be working on yourself, working on, you know, the separation, the ultimate, whatever you're doing and yeah. that kind of stuff. Well, and cost. Yeah. Uh, so people can show up for free. They wow. can just come in, hang out for free. No problem. They want to get a cup of tea or some baklava. Aleph makes some amazing baklava. She's Turkish. So she's wow. got the whole setup there. Um, and then, you know, different people come in, do different things, a couple of workshops on there. So that people can, they can, in a safe and sacred space, they can be embraced by a community. The grander concept. And not that, feel alone. That's the That's really one. what we're here for as well. That's yeah. really what this show is. And probably your podcast. Okay. You're not alone yeah. in divorce or depression or whatever, whatever you're going through. Yeah. That's kind of cool that way. Yeah. So people can come in. Now, another one that we're um, in April, we're really building up is the village or village rising. There's a Facebook group, there's these different things. And this is the grander, we talked a little bit earlier about the metaversity concept. Uh huh, metaversity, um, yeah. okay. So it's this concept of a non localized community, which, you know, we've got social media, things like that. We kind right. of get that concept now. Right. But there are rarely, like meetup groups or stuff like that that are real consistent that are actually boots on the ground creating these changes in people's lives. So the Village Rising, we're going to get Oprah involved and that kind of thing, so it'll be fun. Um, but the, the Village Rising is contributing to that direction. And then there's, throughout uh, Utah and, and throughout the world, there's these different uh, spiritual community hubs and if we tune into each of those, then no matter where everybody's at, they can find the resources that they're looking for. Right. 
Um, so that's the metaversity concept, is that people are helping people, like you say, and they're actually teaching the different skill sets that they've got. You know, Asia is a silversmith, which not many people are silversmiths, right? Right. Um, so, I mean, do you want to learn silversmithing? Do you want something made up in, in silver? Do you want these different things? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, Aleph is an amazing uh, caterer. Uh, she's also written a book. She's got the massive online following, these kind of things. You want to learn how to do that. Um, all these all these skills and tools are teachable, so long as people know where to find those folks and how to connect with them. And so that's the Metaversity concept is um, the arts organization, uh, or Dow Metaversity, uh, is, uh, it's this non-localized community that you can come here and get a shaman and a divorce. Right, so you've got else. divorce stuff, you've got, a, you got shaman, you've got, I see in one room here, you've got a fit like a massage yep. therapy, and then you've got, you're talking about arts, mm -hmm. kind of arts for everybody. What other kinds of things? So uh, part of the main part of the, the village concept is um, a, a postpartum. So oh. assisting people through that postpartum, um, and also I'm still going through my right. Just <laughs> so assisting people through that, and also providing them resources like doulas and um, alternative birthing. Wow, and that could be that could be amazing. I, yeah. I I know a lot of people that have had postpartum, yeah. and it continues going. You know, they find themselves doing things that they would never do before. Right. But to understand it, to reach out, mm -hmm. you know, that would be awesome. That's yeah. great. And then uh, Stephanie has, has got this amazing um, Facebook group already that's just flourishing. Um, and then depression as well, too. Yeah. yeah. Just regular old, yeah. you know, depression, I'm, anxiety, I'm not a, stress, yeah. these other things. Which <coughs> in, our, in our culture, we don't necessarily get into the depth of it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oh, well, you're stressed out. Just take a chill pill. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, what's causing the stress? Mm -hmm. um, how are you ineffectively dealing with it? Or... Are, are you internalizing it? Are you externalizing it? Are you doing these other things? Having that, having that dialogue. Um, another group that I work with is having some just beautiful growth right now is uh, Life Story Library. And they are uh, actually teaching the art not only of storytelling, a lot of people focus on storytelling, but also receivership. Mm -hmm. So actually being there to receive the story like you're doing with mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know, you can talk into a camera all by right. yourself, and that's like, okay, that's one form. But if you're actually sitting there and receiving what the other person has to say, they get a sense of healing and connection and completion and all this other stuff goes into it. Right. So that is, that, um, their, uh, the abstract was, was accepted, so they'll be going over to Oxford, and so it goes, like, really international. And the Parliament of World's Religions back in October was here, and we did a bunch of interviews people all over the world coming in and getting to wow. tell their story. Wow. And it's safe and sacred space, like that kind of thing. So where can people go to find you? So the, that's an open question. Right. right. Yeah, the that's easiest a, way, the easiest way to do that is Tyrell Wiltsey plugged into any search engine. So okay. it's T-Y-R-E-L-W-I-L-T-S-E. Okay. Um, that I, I haven't paid for SEO. I just put enough stuff out there right, that I right. show up first. Right. Um, Facebook is a really great way to connect with me. There's also tyrowiltsey.com. Um, but then there's, in addition to all of those, I work with about 33 different nonprofits. So, and if I don't know the person directly, then I know who to connect you to. And, so and you can be quite the resource for people that look to this type of help and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, the community center kind of thing. Right. That's that's pretty amazing. Any um, any really good feel good stories? I mean I'm sure you got quite a few, but you know, somebody that's just come to you, whether it be depression or be a, a, an illness or whatever and and some of the things that you've gone through with them that might show might connect with somebody out there that um, might help them or, you know, motivate them. Right. So, um, one of the ones that, that comes up a lot, and this, it's a bit of a difficult uh, topic, but it's been all over the place, is suicide. 
A lot of people, yep. a lot of people come to me, and they're on the verge of committing suicide. They have, young and old, young and old, I'm everywhere sure. in between. Yes. Yes. And that's actually one of the main motivators for our our school program. Was we're like, we cannot have any more of these kids killing themselves or other kids going right. in and doing this. It just does not work. We've got to give them some better solutions. So when when the when the kids or the adults or anywhere else along the lines comes in and says, you know, I'm I'm thinking about killing myself, or they don't really always come that direct. They'll say, uh, you know, I, my life is completely falling apart. I don't know what to do. Um, or you know they, they pretend to be happy, or there's a bunch of these other indicators. And I work with, um, I forget their names, but the uh, suicide prevention folks mm -hmm. and, and these different. Well, I've even, I've even seen a lot of posters up in schools, high schools, even in adult areas mm -hmm. where I mean, I mean I've had I've had dozens and dozens of people that I've known my age and a little bit younger that have. They're gone. Yeah. I mean, because they just reached that point where yeah. they didn't want to, you know, and that's what we're trying to do here is, is help people understand that they can reach out, that there are other people going through the same types of things, right. young or old, whatever right. you call old, right. or older, right. you know. Relative. Yeah, right. yeah. So people come to me in that space, and, and this is where my, my new company is actually called Miraculous Life. So... I teach people how to live in bliss without conditions. So completely unconditional bliss all the time. And the, one of the recent side effects of that is actually bliss insomnia. Like you oh, just smile yeah. yourself away. Uh -huh. I've been doing that. And recently. people think you're crazy. Yeah, totally, right? <laughs> There's something wrong with my husband. Uh, <laughs> he just smiles all the time yeah, now. Right? Yeah, he's clearly on He doesn't watch stuff. football very much anymore. Right? right? Yeah. So I, I teach people that. Which... Right. From from a from an avenue of I'm going to kill myself to I'm so happy and blessed and fulfilled that not only do I have plenty to give myself, I have plenty to give my community, plenty to give my family, plenty right. to go here. So that's been my favorite transformation is when people come to me, absolutely at the end of their rope, and they say, uh, I I don't know what to do with myself. Can can you help me? And I sit and I listen, first and foremost, just without judgment, right. just sit and listen. And even if, even if what they're saying is terrifying in the, in the classical sense, it's like, you know, they're talking about all the different ways they plan to kill themselves, all the different ways that they, um, you know, they've tried to take care of these other aspects of their life so that they can, right. so on and so forth. Listen to all of that. And just in that listening transformation happens. And then there's additional tools, um, which really a big part of it is listening. Right. Additional tools that say, okay, you said this in this way, and this is where body language and some of these other tools come in handy, and what I got from it in addition to what you were saying was this. And then people, I'm also a minister, so people can share in confession with me and complete confidentiality. We'll have to turn it off for me on the on the sharing of the. the, the I'm just kidding. <laughs> turn it off. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. The confession station. Yeah. Right. right. So, uh, but people knowing that they can share, knowing that right. it will be kept confidential, knowing that through, you know, what is it, thousands of people now that I have assisted, that the results are consistent. So you're teaching people how to be good to themselves. I'm teaching people how to create miracles. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, miracles are tangible things. They are as real as world peace. They're as real as, um, you know, being abundant beyond measure, like money and food and uh, travel and anything else that you indicate is abundance. All of that is possible. It's teachable. And there's folks like yourself and all over the world, these different people and resources that can assist you in getting there if you know how to connect to them, mm -hmm. if you know how to apply what they're teaching. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the foundational stuff that I share with people. It's like, okay, you, you want to be more physically fit. There's, you know, to, to borrow the phrase, there's an app for that, right? Sure. 
Um, yeah. You want to be more spiritually connected. You want to be more religiously devout. You want to be uh, more wealthy. There's tools to make all that happen. And I personally have, have gone through, I don't even know, it's probably about 250,000 hours of training um, to get people the solutions that they're looking for. Um, and you know all of that, seminars and these different things that are out there, but distilling that down to, okay, what is the, what's the essential nugget of the truth that's in that? And then how do I share that to everybody? Not just people that speak my language, or you know, I'm also looking into different ways to share with folks that um, they don't they, they don't have hearing or sight or um, physical touch or these other things. So there's a lot of different sciences that are available now. So world peace. I mean, that's that's part of my global bliss and then a global bliss initiative. I want everybody to be happy all the time. If everybody's happy all the time, there's no reason to kill each other, fight over food, or um, kill themselves or any of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's no reason to you know watch other people starve while people behind fences have all they need and more, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we're we're getting into this community awareness, and then when people get that, like really get that, then you know they don't sweat the small stuff anymore. They you know they say I need a day off, so they take one. They say, um, you know, I, I see somebody um, that's changing their tire on the side of the road and they stop and help mm -hmm. them out because mm -hmm. that's where they're at in their life. Right. Um, or whatever, you know, whatever the context. For me, it was very difficult for me to get into that space to be able to do that myself. Mm -hmm. But once I got there, nothing else made sense. It didn't make any sense right. to, right. like, oh, well, I'm going to pretend that person isn't there. It didn't make any, because it hurt. It hurt my soul right. to, to even say, you know, but I can't deal with your stuff right now. Um, and the, the idea also is to train people in not only what they do well, but to make all my skills transferable so that everybody can be a world peace coordinator. Everybody can share the, the shamanic tools and gifts and, and whatever other gifts that they've got and, and really create that change in their community. And if it's just me doing it, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy for me to go and talk to you know a couple billion right. people and say, right. hey, this is how you do it. And I, I don't even know the context how a lot of people live their lives. But if I can learn and I can and I can listen to the story and I can tell and I can teach, then it's possible. And that's that's really the the, the realm that I, I want to assist people to get into. Miracles. Um, advancements in, in science and tech and all this other stuff, it's all possible. Especially if you get, you know, seven, eight billion unique individuals working on some of the things that they collectively want and need. There won't be water shortages. There won't be, um, you know, the, the fighting and the chaos and everything else. People will just be like, okay, I mean, I'm thinking Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like, you know, yeah. we just got beyond where we were fighting over stuff, and then we decided to go explore the galaxy. Right. Um, and you know the internal universe too. Having having. Yeah. Don't you like think? This. Yeah. Don't you think that's? I mean, really, a lot. I know a lot of people out there, and a lot of people that I that I talk to or work with. It's it's a it's really finding themselves. It's really understanding. You know, like you say, go out and you know make miracles mm -hmm. and see them in front of you. It's. I think we are always you know as humans. We throw up the barriers. We yeah. just throw them up. Well, yeah. I can't. You know, it's just like when we're a little kid. Oh, yeah. I can't hit a home run, or yeah. I can't ride my bike, or whatever. We do that as adults. Yeah. No, I can't do that. Well, yeah. why? Why can't you do that? Yeah. We're here with Ty in Salt Lake City, Utah, talking about uh, people helping people and all the different things that that he does and all the things that they do here. Um, if you have questions, I'm going to put his name on everything. We'll download this onto YouTube. Cool. Um, we'll throw it on your, you know, throw it on, use it however you want. Yeah. Um, it'll be available on my web, website, bodenotbroken.com, uh, fairly soon, but it'll be on Facebook pretty quick. Any parting thoughts? Anything you want to, you know, you want to tell anybody about anything? You know, something. I'd like to thought. quote Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Okay. <laughs>
Be excellent to each other. By Ted Theodore Logan. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's what it what it really comes down to. Is you're you're one of those. Sense. Yeah, exactly. And you're. You're one of those guests that I hope I hope I can have you back because oh, yeah. there's so much more we can talk about and I think we should talk about. I agree. And I'll help you help you help me the whole nine yards. But I want to thank everybody for watching. Thanks for thanks for having me. Thanks, I appreciate buddy. it. Yeah. It's been really it's really cool. Right. I yeah I tell everybody when I go into different types of situations or homes or well I'm an old cop and we <laughs> old cops you know we were. We're very attuned to, we observe and we feel and we, you know, whether we like it or not, right. um, we can sense, you know, I can sense some real, real neat stuff going on here and, and I'm glad you got a hold of me and want to be on the show because that's what it's all about. If there's anybody out there that's watching, like to be on the show or um, want to talk to Ty, I'm again, gonna we're going to throw it people your way. Awesome, Definitely. awesome. We'll, uh, uh, we'll wrap things up. want to thank everybody for watching uh, again. Uh, it's all about the bend, and again, go ahead, we'll finish with your your B again. Go oh, for it. B, Talk to the camera. B, excellent to each other. <laughs> also, B, therefore perfect. Thanks, y'all. Love y'all. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks.